Transmission uses a governor to sense road speed. Is that, is that true, true or is that false? That's false. Well, it did. So it was false. Now, that's, this is only true on the transmissions that are not electronic. Oh. <coughs> the governor you had some weights in it that would move whenever the drive shaft got faster, and they would cause some spool valves to change position. Sometimes you'd have little fly weights. You'd have one that was being spun by gears. You had little fly weights that would go out, and it would push the little spool valve, and it would cause it to uh, rechannel the fluid. And as governor pressure, and you'll get in more into this, Chelsea, when you get all my transmission, the governor pressure pushes against, line, I mean, uh, you know, throttle valve pressure, basically. So the, uh, if you're going up, as your governor pressure rises, it causes it to shift into the next gears. But if your throttle valve pressure increases or your modulator pressure, if it's hooked to vacuum, uh, then that's going to cause it to hold the gears longer. You know how it is. Just think about when you're driving a trans driving a vehicle. If you take off gently without applying much throttle, it's going to go whoa, 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 shift through the gears pretty quick. But if you really have to stand on it to go around a truck, you want it to hold the gears longer, right? I mean, you want it to stay. You don't want it to. Sh In other words, it may shift out of from first to second at uh, 15 miles an hour if you're taking off gently. But if you're really standing on it, you need like if you if you're having to take off and make that. Oh my gosh, I'm going from Enterprise to Op and there's a log truck. And I've got a, I've got a passing zone here, but I need to get around this guy before some cars come. And so you head off around there. And when you hold that pedal down, you're going to hold it years longer. The throttle valve pressure is working against governor pressure. But on the newer transmissions, it uses the speed of the vehicle and your throttle angle. All of it's delivered electronically to the powertrain control module, which is controlling the transmission and the engine. And the, the powertrain control module has got a variable force solenoid that it uses to control the pressure. And it's also got a pressure transducer, typically, that's going to give, be feeding back information about where the pressure is. So you're going to look at your scan tool, and you're going to be seeing a target pressure for your uh, transmission throttle pressure. I mean, you know, uh, control pressure, rather. And it, that target pressure is actually going to be dithered by the transmission. So basically, you don't have a governor on the newest transmission. This is a sort of an antiquated question. Main line pressure is the source from which the governor and throttle pressures are produced, and that is true. Now, those pressures are modified by the throttle valve and the, uh, in other words, the modulator valve. Remember, it's got, some of you guys might have ever seen if somebody puts a, uh, their uh, 350 turbo hydromatic back in an old Chevrolet pickup truck, and they've got the vacuum line pinched or disconnected. And uh, it, it, well, it holds the gears really long, and it slams real hard, you know, whenever it shifts. Yeah. So that when that pressure yeah, goes no, up, it's that's it's Bronco, Yeah. Is that good? That's right. pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said, I take that off. Right. Uh, as engine load decreases, throttle pressure increases. That's false. That's backwards. That's, backwards. that's totally backwards. Now, here's another thing. Did you know if you leave the throttle, like at these, like this, uh, some of these, vehicles have got a throttle valve cable going down to the transmission and that throttle valve cable is connected to the throttle for a reason. When you go deep into that throttle, it's supposed to increase the throttle valve pressure so that the clutches will apply more firm and it'll hold pressure and all this. What if you accidentally leave that throttle valve cable unhooked when you're putting everything back together? It's not going to go Burns the transmission up. Bingo. And it was okay until you left that throttle cable loose. You see, so people come back in there, hey, my transmission's burned up. And you look at the throttle cable and it's sitting there dangling because you forgot to hook it up. That's your fault. Because if the what pressure doesn't. Huh? What do you think is wrong with my grandpa's truck? Uh, it probably got needs a reaction sun shell and all the seals and probably a sprag clutch in the rear end and a whole bunch of hard parts. You probably need a good transmission put in there. But, uh, what do you think, Archie? Archie, can you help me build that one? I guess. Yeah. It won't work in drive. It won't get it won't work in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a transmission over another shop that somebody built. We can slam in there and see if it works. Mm -hmm. That one you put together? Remember that first one you built over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the one that took it apart and put it I together. Worry, and, sir, huh? I Why not? Because it's like guys didn't win. How much would it cost? He would probably. He, he told me if anybody wanted it, he'd sell it to him cheap. You for real? I'm serious. So we put it in there. We'll pop it in there and see how it does. Mm. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it, won't take, it, won't, it won't take long to do it. It's good practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at Westover. Look at Westover Bob and he said, no, 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 okay. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah, Brandon would enjoy helping you out. Brandon's a transmission man. Okay. Um,
All right, this says, the speed of the vehicle increases, governor fluid pressure rises, and that is true. Okay, that's what I just told you a minute ago. Most mechanically operated throttle valves will automatically adjust themselves using a vacuum modulator. False. The, ma the throttle valve, you know, Chrysler's used throttle valves forever. I mean, they've, ever, they've typically, I don't know if they Chrysler, two things that Chrysler typically has stayed away from their whole lives is modulator valves that are vacuum operated to modulate shift pressure and mass airflow. What? They just don't use mass airflow. Now, some of the Mitsubishis that have the Chrysler nameplate on them might have it, but Chrysler, like if you look at Jeep Cherokees and any of Chrysler and all that, you know, unless there's some brand new stuff out there that I don't know about, or there may be, but they have, historically, they've stayed the heck away from mass airflow. They just they don't map. like it. They use MAP. That's what they use. Map. My 2001 Jeep Cherokee uses MAP. You look on that Dodge truck that y'all pulled apart, it ain't got no uh, mass airflow sensor on it. You know what? Then, uh, the... Uh, well, Brandon's Dodge truck. Look at your Dodge truck. It doesn't have a mass airflow on it. No mass airflow. Map. You don't know what your truck's in on? Never looked. Okay, you got 50 points off. I thought about swapping no maps into Huh? On my phone. Yeah. Well, it's not a bad idea, but if you got a cam in there, you're going to have some issues with a rough. If you got a, if you got a high performance cam, you're going to have low vacuum and idle. It's going to run rich. Yeah. You're better off with mass airflow if you've got a cammed up engine. Okay. So I'll just leave that so alone. Okay, don't go there. <laughs> All right. Put cams in it. Yeah, if you put the cams in there, your engine vacuum at idle is going to be crummy. And unless your PCM is tuned for a high, for that particular cam, you don't have issues. So don't go there. Bad, bad. Now you can do some fancy thing where you switch over to map whenever you... Oh, that would be too hard, wouldn't it? Not really. I've yeah. seen it done before. Yeah, I know, but there's no use to doing that if it's doing like it. You drift just fine. I've seen you going out there with your wheels pop, wheelie popping business and all that going on. All right. All right, now let me see that. Uh, let's see. A typical four-speed automatic transmission has three shift valves. Is that true or is that false? That's typically true, true. right? Shift valves. Now, they're not talking about all the valves. They're talking about how many shift valves it's got. Why does a four-speed have three? One, two shift, two, three shift, three, four shift. Ta-da. That ain't rocket science, is it? All right. An electronic governor provides the same functions as check ball and control valve governor. Sure. Oh, yeah, it does do the same. Sure does, yep. Okay. An improper adjustment on a mechanically operated TV system will result in late hard shift or soft slipping shifts. What exactly is a TV system? Uh, the throttle valve. You know, when you, the deeper oh. you go into the throttle, the higher pressure goes. We were talking about earlier, TV. That's true. And, uh, and if you got TV, you, got, you can adjust that cable. <coughs> and uh, the, the cool thing about it is, like on my Jeep, the way you adjust it, is you push that little spring and you yank it all the way back in so that whenever you mash your gas pedal, it will go in. It will come out. I mean, I can show it to you if I was driving my Jeep, but it's just basically the way you adjust. You can fudge on it a little bit if you know which way you're going. Uh, but uh, that particular, we used to do a zillion of those things, those throttle valve adjustments on those uh, Crown Victorias and stuff. We, that's a lot of what we did on those. But, you know, it got to where it wasn't quite such a big deal later on because it was more or less automatic. Even on your GM cars, you know, they have a little spring-loaded thing you pull, and you pull the cable housing back all the way in there so that when you mash the throttle, it ratchets it out and it finds the place it wants uh, to be. That, on, on that navigator, is that, um, <laughs> I don't know if it's a cruise or if it's that throttle valve. Do they have a throttle valve on? That, for that navigator at 98? I don't think so, but the, if it's got two cables hooked to the throttle, one of them's probably going to be cruising. That's what I was thinking. I was just wondering. Yeah, because it's going to have an electronic transmission in it, you right. know, D4OD, I think, or something. Or they call it a 4R100 later. You know. Same thing, though, isn't it? Yeah, more or less. You know. I know some nuances there, but not many. Um, like a 4R70W and an AOD-E are the same transmission. Yeah. The gear ratios are slightly different. Uh, how many of the are there on a Sun Gear on the... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to give you a hard time. All right, All right where are we at here? Uh, if you, like I was talking about, if you got soft slipping chips... I want to tell you something else. I'd rather have a firm shift than a slipping shift. Me too. I mean, if you got a if you got a cushion slipping shift that you can't really feel. Now, what else did I tell you before? A lot of these newer engines and transmissions, got that the PCM up. will actually, as the shift is happening, and after, after as the shift is happening, you guys, it detorques the engine during the time when it's shifting. What are you guys? You guys selling something over? No, we're talking about that transmission. But whenever you got a. Uh, Whatever it, whatever you shift from like first to second, second to third, and the PCM knows exactly the moment when it shifts, and it takes away the power for just a second. 
I mean, even though you're holding your foot your foot steady, it does it's that. Like my mama's, uh, yeah, awesome. yeah, it does that kind of thing. And you know, they had this thing I told you about fuzzy logic. You remember telling me about that? You ever you ever drive a vehicle and have cruise control on it and you get irritated because you don't want it to downshift and you start up a hill and you go, ah, ah, ah. you ever had to do that? Well, on the uh, on some of those Mitsubishi's that were Chryslers, you know, like the Summit and the Talon and those, what they would do was uh, they would have the uh, electronics program. They'd say, you know, as the throttle angle increased and the cruise control was doing it, and the engine controller would say, look, we've got cruise engaged. I know that at this throttle angle and engine load and speed, we would ordinarily make it, ordinarily make a downshift, but because they've got the cruise control on, we're not going to make that downshift right now. It's sort of an agreement. Yeah, doesn't it slow down? Not too bad. If it's if it gets ridiculous, yeah, they'll make a downshift. But at a time when you would ordinarily make a downshift, if they were using their foot, it will not do it. And that was just on some of them in the late '90s. I don't know how often they went with that. But. People are dumb though, because I mean, if it if it if it didn't downshift, and then they got a downshift up again. When they get on top of the hill, don't put in that burn more gas. Gas. It'll burn more gas if you're using cruise control in hilly country. You're gonna suck gas. Yeah, that's all there is to it. I'm going to lose some speed going up a hill if I'm using my foot because I'm not going to make it down here. Because I'm all about saving gas. Cruise control, unless it's the fuzzy logic kind I was just talking about, it ain't like that. That's what now, we that. had somebody came in, a customer came in, and they had bought a new Thunderbird. And they says, this Thunderbird gains oh, speed going down hills <laughs> with cruise control on it. And our old Thunderbird didn't do that. So we want this fixed. What are you going to tell them? Okay, here's what you can do. Let about half the air out of the tires so that it won't roll so free and it won't gain speed going down the hills. The cruise control does not apply the brake. Now, on the old 66 Thunderbird, it did. It had cruise control? Yeah, 66 Thunderbird had cruise control on the steering wheel and you matched the. Oh, yeah. It had a button on the. that said brake. My grandpa's got a button there. Yeah. Store. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I mean, you know, what the, the bad part about a 66 Thunderbird is. You can put a $1,500 engine in an old car like that and still have a $200 car. So be careful about that. You know what I'm saying? Just because you drop a $1,500 motor in a car don't mean that car's worth $1,500 plus whatever the car was worth before. Yeah. It, it can be, it, you may gain just a couple of hundred dollars from all the money you poured into it. So you're not going to get it back going. <coughs> okay, let's move on. We need to get out here. We need to get into the shop. This is, this is boring. Yeah. No, it's really not boring. I'm working really hard not to make it boring. You ever notice that? Yes. Uh, keep it moving. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, uh, you ever been? In, you ever sat under an instructor that talked real slow just to stretch his last session out? Yep. That just really stinks. And I've I've been under instructors like that, and uh, you know where they talk real slow. They do it on purpose. You remember that story I told you about the diesel class I went out there to teach? That lady hired me to go out there and teach a diesel class. She said it's a four-hour class from six to ten. I went out there and had 287 PowerPoint slides on Cummins diesel, and. Uh, I was, and I was gauging my crowd. I was watching them. And when I knew they got it, I'd move on to the next slide. And I would talk about that slide. I knew they have it, I'd move on to the next slide. These were professional mechanics. Now, they'd been working all day, 6 o'clock. They had a meal. They were supposed to last till 10 o'clock. I was doing two and a half hours. They all packed up, went home. And she says, hey, this was supposed to be a four-hour class. And these guys paid money for a four-hour class. I said, they got what they came for. Wait till you see the evaluation sheets. So the next morning, she said, she says, Wow. His evaluation sheets look really good. I said, let me tell you what. I've been where they are. You're tired. You get what you came for. And that guy's let you out a little early. You're going to be tickled pink. I said, they didn't, have, they didn't want to stay there till 10 o'clock unless they were learning stuff that was, you know. If, once they got it, I wasn't going to stretch each slide out and make it a long time like I'm doing this talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, that's just what I'm saying. You give people what they want and the time that they can get it, and that's what we're trying to do in here. We're trying to move fast enough. So you don't get dull's bill. Because uh, I'm more about, you know, pulling wrenches than I am about, you know, doing lectures. I don't like lectures either. Um, all right. And I'll tell you the bad thing about factory school. You go to factory school, you're being class four and a half days, and for about the last 30 minutes of the whole week, you're going to be in the shop. Yep. Usually. That's what it comes to. Usually. All right. Was that like an ADC or what? No, he was at one. Might be a little help on the way, but He's mighty tough. <laughs> All right, now we're moving on. Tapered roll bearings on the ends of shafts absorb radial thrust forces, and that is true. And there's a, that is a, this right here, I'm going to zoom in on that. That right there is a, if it'll zoom in. That right there is a tapered roller bearing. Right there. Hey, Kathy! All right. Kathy, Kathy is the parts girl. <laughs> and she's bringing me what? What are you bringing me, Kathy? Drill bits. 
Pete Drill bringing bit. me some drill bits so we can finish <laughs> drilling out the hole that got broke off. Said he was doing brain so. surgery in here. <laughs> Brandon needs it. Brain? Brandon <laughs> surgery. No, Sean needs it. Sean definitely needs it. He needs my yeah. He gives us. Oh, yeah. 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 What? Did you lose one? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to call you Sam. Start working with him. All right. I'm not going to. I don't want to work with Sean. I don't want to. He makes me. Do not, do not be rude or hateful to anybody because that's not where it works. I'm not being rude or hateful. I'm just saying. It sounds to me like yours. You just got it out. He just reminds me of Daigle. He gets on my nerves. Oh, he's not even. He's not. No, he don't look anything like Daigle. He tries to take over. He'll be like, stop, stop, stop. stop. Like, Randall, he's fine, man. Shut up. I will Shut tell up. you this. I put him to helping you because you didn't have what it took to finish that without somebody helping you. Because <laughs> you give up too easy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, see there? There you go. All right, so to so this. That's why your girlfriend's going to break up. Yeah. What's your name? <laughs> Alright. I'm not gonna that's one of the that's one of the places that we're not gonna touch. Hey you guys are a live video. This is on YouTube, okay? Right. Number three. Uh, gear position is determined by which gear is locked to the main shaft. That's on the manual transmission, right? Gear position is determined by which gear is locked to the main shaft. That is true. What? Yes. On the on the transmission? No, manual. That's what I said, manual. Oh, this is a manual analog? Yeah, we've moved to a manual. This is manual analog, man. Oh, okay. Hey, that's what drive train's about, okay? I didn't think about that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. If you're talking about gears being locked to the main shaft, you know, yeah, that's not a trick question. Okay, number 13. Adjustments to the shift linkage may be made with the transmission in low gear or neutral. Can't you just make it in park? Yeah, I wouldn't make it in either neutral or park, and I would no low gear. You don't do it in low gear. That's you know fine. I mean? Neutral is typically, think about this, when you put those... Uh, neutral safety and transmission range yeah, sensor, it's always in neutral. Yeah. So you put your linkage in neutral and everything and you pop it on there. Yeah, that's how it's in the other one. Yeah. You know, whenever we were fighting with getting that uh, transmission tra tra range sensor unplugged because it was like it was glued in there, it was horrible. And we fought and fought and fought and fought and fought with that. And we grumbled and we. I got that joke off the other day. Well, what happened was he found a technical service bulletin that says the gummy stuff inside the transmission range sensor may melt and flow into the connector and glue it in there. That's a brilliant design. I mean, it really is, you know. And I told you about the one that had some uh, pinched wires. You better save your How do you put that? We pulled the transmission out and put a rear main seal in there. And Ray put it back in. And he didn't quite plug the transmission range sensor in good enough to provide a ground to the hatch. Solenoid. And so what happens is, the guy says, my key, my key thing has never worked for a long time on my hatch, but I usually open it with the button on the dash, right? Okay, so on a Chevrolet, like at Blazer, if you ain't got that thing in park or neutral, you've got no ground to the actuator. You know why? You're driving down the road, you bump that thing by accident, it pops up, you lost your kids, your ice chest, your dog, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So they don't want it open in the hatch while you're driving down the road. Well, see... When the guy came back after we'd worked on the transmission and says, now my hatch don't work right, you're rolling your eyes and say, oh, this is another one of those cars we're married to. Wrong. This guy had a legitimate beef. And what we did was we found there's no ground to that actuator. We plugged this thing. And how would you check that, by the way? What? To see if there's a ground to the actuator. Oh. Where's the button up front? Power comes through, the button goes to the actuator. The other side of the actuator is supposed to be grounded, right? right. I'm going to hook until the button out of the dash, hook the ground to hot. I mean, hook the test light to hot. And see if I'm getting a ground coming from the actuator. I'm not until I put it in park. We had to go through this one time. See that? Bingo. There you go. All right. Now, number 14. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you know why the trunk on the uh, on the Sonata wouldn't open? No. Why? Two reasons. Why? Because I, I was going to do that. There was two locks. And huh? I don't know why they built it this way. On the back of the seat, there's a lock that keeps you from folding the seat down. Yes, and I somebody did. had locked it. Uh, on the latch right here by the inside, there was a, pl a place where you, when you move this little lever, it locks it where you can't open it with a key or the button. Huh. When you hit the button, you'll hear it going, grunt, 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 but it won't open. So if you open the trunk on that Sonata, you'll see a little, like, you know, like your child lock on your back door? Yeah, yeah. It's like that. The only way you could get that thing open was take the bolt, unbolt the seat, pry them stupid things up. Could put, feed a skinny guy through there like a piece of spaghetti. Like, like we did. One of them high school students is about as skinny as, uh, as, as yeah, or Jeremy or something. 
we you know, we, you know, we, poked, we poked him, but then there was a flashlight. I told him, I said, there may be a dead body in the trunk. I don't know. But anyway, we went in there, and he got a flashlight, and he pulled that lever and got out. You know, and boom, and opened it up. And now, now you can get in the trunk on the Sonata. But some yo-yo locked the dadgum seats and right, locked yeah. the back. It was like, did you do that? Anyway, it was somebody, that was a dirty bit of cheating. And I don't know what in the world they would have that car built that way for, where you can lock it so you can't get in it. I mean, the only place you could get in it is take extreme measures. That's stupid. It a is. criminal mastermind built that car. <laughs> well, there may be something wrong with the key part of it. Oh. I mean, it, it may not be built that way. There may be something else wrong with it. Well, you can get in it now. Okay. Uh, synchronizer rings may have grooves or friction material on the inside for comfort. And you know what synchronizer rings do? They actually are going to, they're supposed to bite in, bite through the oil film on that gear that they're mating with so they can pick it up, make it pick up speed or slow down if as it needs to, to, you know, so they can slide onto it. Yep. Side bearing preload is measured with an inch pound torque wrench and a tool that fits over the pinion shaft. Is that true or is that false? Yeah. That is true. That's true. That is true. That I is so true. Yeah, side, no, well, side gearing inch pound. No, you're not going to measure preload in foot pounds. Please. <laughs> Even on those rear ends out there, you're going to measure like 20 inch pounds. Is what you gotta have. That's telling you how much how much preload you got on your bearings. Yeah. All that. You remember like we did on the one that we built with yours? Okay. Well, we didn't do that. We just put it in. Yeah, we just right get, we just felt of it. It was. <laughs> it, it works good. It makes yeah. a little. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although good. they're not very economical, mechanical or cable linkages are used in most manual transactions because they are reliable. False. <laughs> All right. False. Cable linkages are doggone sure not cheap. I had to buy shift cables for a, uh, this Toyota. That we used to have, the little green one that I auctioned off, and $125 a piece for them ship cables. Ridiculous. You know, let's bend a piece of rod and, you know, hook it up with some cutter keys or something. Yeah. All right. All right. They're not cheap. Well, they work smooth, though, for, you know, somebody hooked them up backwards and messed them up is what happened on that one. Outstanding performance. Our Gears story. and gear sets on manual transaxles are similar to, similar to rear wheel drive manual synchro mesh transmissions. Synchro mesh is like one where it keeps the power band, right? Well, synchro mesh basically uh, is so that you won't grind the gears. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what that's about. That's what we got synchro mesh. You know, you know when you're downshifting a synchronized transmission. You know, the, the guys in the diesel business down there, when they're driving these big diesel trucks, they better be able to watch their tack and double clutch that thing to get up the gears going at the right speed for it to drop in there without hitting the gear. And a good truck driver can do that. I cannot do that, but I mean, I've, I've been there, and I can sometimes make it going without grinding. But I ain't no truck driver. I never wanted to be a truck driver. I got a lot of respect for truck drivers that can drive without ever hitting a tooth on a gear. Because I mean, they got to be watching the tack and working the gas and pulling with the clutch. A lot of gears. Yeah, boy, I'm telling you, you got a big woman up. You know. I drove one twice, and it. <laughs> Yep. But the same time, we did a little bit better. Yeah, you'll get better as you drive it more, but that's something you got to learn how to do. Next question. Next question. Let's make it out of here. Uh, let's see. Uh, all transactional models have the same disassembly. 17. 17 was actually a true a true statement. All transactional models have the same disassembly procedure. True false. or false? False, false, false. Okay, that is false. Everybody should know that. It is not rocket science, and it's not. It's a no-brainer. All right, you got that? When trembling a transaxle, rotate the side gears at least one full revolution prior to measuring backlash. This ensures the gears are firmly seated. That's true. They move around a little bit if they're not, and then they're, you know, you'll see, hey, wait a minute, i got a problem here. Uh, one, one of the things I've been trying to teach you guys, especially on your time and change job over there, is you check everything two or three or four or five times. And make doggone sure that it's right. Um, for proper transaxle maintenance, manufacturers recommend changing the lubricant only if it becomes contaminated. Is that true or false? And that's how it said on our own looking right there. Uh, trans, uh, you talking about for manual or automatic? automatic? Yeah, manual's what I'm talking about here. I should have really made that clear. You know, I should have actually delineated this no, test. No. Huh? You should change this to You shall not surely die. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So now, now we got shop time. Let's go guys. Let's go. Shop. Hurry, hurry.